people. There are guys that's been shooting for two years who can probably blow me under the water with their photography and their Photoshop. That's great. Right. But they don't have the business acumen. They're not responding to their emails on time. They're mm. not giving clients their pictures on time. They're not calling That's back people cool. on time. That's the part that they don't quite understand. You got to run that business part. That business part isn't there. Regardless of how talented you are, it won't last long. Welcome back to Big Texas Boston. I'm your host, Lelani Wilson-Jones. This is the show where we're spilling the Texas tea on the bosses that I know. It's time for Big Texas Boston with Lelani Wilson-Jones. Like spilling the tea on Boston Up. Like Today we're spilling the Texas tea with the one and only world-renowned photographer, Kwan Burton. World-renowned. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you for having so me. So let's just dive right in and talk about uh, how you got started in photography. Wow. Um, let's see. I started about 2005. Just kind of messing around with the camera, um, and it goes back even farther than that. I've always been a person interested in in, in art and uh, drawing, painting, color, and all that stuff. I did all that through high school. Um, uh, my major, my concentration at high school was was art classes, and so um, went to college like everybody told me to do. Just got a regular college degree, nothing special. Okay. Ended up working at a bank for about nine years, but it seemed like I was still missing something. And so, and it was just the art. So I got a camera as a, as a gift, uh, right after I finished my MBA program and just kind of fell in love with taking pictures. Okay. And, and that's about 2005 or six or so. And then from there, you just kind of start shooting everything. Everybody kind of starts seeing the photos, asking you to do little small odd and end jobs. And then it just kind of grew from, from that experience. Okay, what would you say makes your eye unique? Uh, I don't know if it makes it unique. I just have maybe a slightly different perspective on things. Okay. Um, I know how I want the the image framed up. I know where I want the person standing, sitting, whether they're on the right half of the camera, left hand, in the middle. Uh, and my favorite was always tight shots. I'm not a landscape guy. I, I don't okay. see. I see the beauty in landscape photography. But to me, I'd rather just take it in with my eyes versus using the camera. When I go out to like, like national parks or mountain ranges, I want to in the, or the oceans. I want to see it with my own eyes versus through the camera. And so for me, it's a little bit different. But with people, I can frame them up, and then I can I I, I know what I'm looking at. I know what I want, and faces and expressions and the way somebody is shaped. All that just draws me in even more. Right. I know you've taken some photographs of me that I absolutely love. I've been saying for a while I was going to have them blown up and put in my house, but I love the photographs. So let's talk about how you moved from local to international. Uh, I don't know if it was necessarily a move that I did on purpose. I okay. think it's, it kind of just happens. Uh, it happens that way. You know, you get you get those phone calls, those emails about jobs that you kind of dreamed about. And then all of a sudden when they look down on your email system, like, is this even real? You know, right. is, this, is this a real opportunity? Uh, and that's kind of the way it went. I didn't advertise for it. I didn't publicize I wanted to, to do it. It's just, you know, I don't know if it's fate, purpose, however you want to call it, God's blessings on your life. It just kind of happens that way. And I think once you're in a position for a long enough time, people take notice. Right. And if you're doing it right, people take notice. If you're not doing it right, they also take notice on that too, and you don't get those calls. <laughs> so it's a matter of just continuing to um, hone in on your craft and 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 going the way that you know that, that God laid out for you. Okay. Was there any particular photo shoot, I mean, because you've done so many, but that just stands out in your mind as your greatest piece of work? I don't. Uh, okay. They're all my you babies. <laughs> It's kind of like with you, right? They're all right. It's and like they're trying to pick you. Good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you do a lot in, in Dallas, obviously, it's a lot of commercial work. We don't get a lot of fashion photo shoots here, and those kind of do get the same repetitive: white background, plain backgrounds, gray backgrounds, and they're but they're for the client. Right. So, uh, for me, my passion's always been shooting more fashion photography. So I love the clothes, the outfits, the posing, and I, and I love even doing more on location than in the studio. So those may stand out a little bit more than just the commercial headshots. 
Okay. for me. Okay. And just an insider tip, since you mentioned that you love fashion, I know that your wife is a fashionista. Is that how you met her? That is how I met her. Uh, <laughs> actually, I met her, uh, your, your, your guy over here, like I call the names, he was around when I first met her. Okay. Um, I was hired by another gentleman that we both know. Uh, his name is Willie Johnson. I'll give him credit for that all the time. Hired to come out and shoot an album cover. She was into music at that time. Okay. And she was more of a, of a writer, producer, not actually trying to sing or, or rap or anything like that. And I was hired by him to come out and shoot an album cover for her. Came out, shot the cover, got paid and left. Didn't think nothing about it. It was a job. <laughs> right. It was a job. Right. Uh, and then probably like maybe two years later, not really communicating much with her, or a year and a half later, I get another call to do another project for her. And then from there, we kind of developed more of that relationship then. Because okay. at the first time, Willie was more the middle person. You know, he kind of did with the middle person right. more than whoever did the actual hiring. And that was my experience with her. It was really just on set, snap, 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 and then I was done. Okay. Next time, she hit me directly. And then that's how we kind of started that relationship and just getting to know each other. And then from there, it grew into a, relationship, a full, full blown relationship. All right. That's awesome. Now, tell us about your worst experience in photography for the young aspiring photographer. What mistake would you not want them to make? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> I, I guess really just don't think you know it all. Be open to listening to other people's ideals. Um, I've never had a problem with someone helping a person pose, for example. Okay. So just just be open to to gathering all the information you can. Uh, yeah, worse. I mean, I've had some, and I won't say necessarily bad photo shoots or bad experiences. They they do happen. There's some stuff where, typically, if anything, it came probably from the wedding industry, just dealing with. Okay. So many different people right, around, right. but nothing I could say that's just that was just worse or horrible. Okay. And your favorite photography you've already said is fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it outside of fashion? Uh, I've dabbled more and more into the video side of things too. Okay. So I'll say outside of fashion, maybe it's more the video now. Okay. Uh, and what it is is just something new for me, even though I've been doing it now for about six years. It still it still feels new every time I pick up a video camera. Okay. Uh, and just trying to mimic what I would do with a stills camera with a video camera. Okay. And what would you say the biggest takeaway is when you go in to edit a photo? What's your number one goal? Just you do to amazing editing. Yeah, but <laughs> actually, my number one goal is not to do as much editing. Okay. I'm trying to capture most 99.5% in camera as possible. Okay. To where I'm not dependent on the edit to make it shine. Th okay. that's, that's my number one objective, if anything, and, and my goal. To where when I get in front of that computer, I'm not spending a whole lot of time. Because that, that takes away from your personal time and your, and your, and your right. time with your family. Right. Where you've already spent three, four hours on the photo shoot. You don't want to go spend three, four more hours now behind yeah. the computer desk trying to get that picture to look right. right. So I'm trying to edit as soon as, as much as I can, as fast as I can, and go be with my family. Awesome. How much commercial work do you do and what national ads or campaigns have you worked on? Uh, my commercial work is probably about 40% of my business. I still do oh, a lot wow. of a lot of individuals, uh, the the family, birthday, portraits, still do a lot of those, especially, and I don't consider the, the branding as commercial work. It's more like, you know, if it's a real estate agent or an author who is coming in, that's, that's, I don't put that under commercial work, even though it is commercial worker they're selling that book they're selling those ads to better themselves but um that's the, that's also a big part of what i do now as well okay so and you said ask about national campaigns uh right. my, my biggest client is toyota okay. obviously so i worked with them uh, for several years now and then i've entered uh some uh nice jobs with amazon uh black business accelerator group as well okay awesome and so how would someone go about getting a corporate gig so to speak you know what or did it everybody well? once again it kind of fell in my lap <laughs> um there is no everybody's gonna be different right everybody's everybody's path is gonna be different and so i think sometimes there's nothing wrong with sending an email or a dm or messaging somebody or a corporate or even doing mock 
mock ads for certain things that you want to go for. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And it may not get you anything. It may get you a little notice. But sometimes you got to just put it out there and see what happens. Right. right. And so, there, yeah, there's no no one way that it just kind of happens. It just happens. It just happens. Yeah. That's awesome. Tell us about the business side because I don't know that it's oversaturated necessarily because, necessarily because to me it's the quality right. of the photos that you get. So you don't have a lot of people out there that care about the quality like I know people who go other places and take pictures or go and you know I'm looking like I would never pay for those photos mm -hmm. <laughs> but what do you say to the business aspect because somebody may be more business savvy and that's how they're able to sell right themselves well the, what would you say was behind the business gotcha. of one the of the camera? things that we have in, in the business is basically it doesn't take talent to really be successful in this okay. business it takes business to be successful in this business. You don't have to be the best photographer or videographer in order to be successful and have a great career, as long as you know the business side of it. You, maybe you're, you could be a great marketer right. and be an average photographer and do just well, do very good. So I think a lot of times, um, a lot of the younger crowd that's entering into the business and with social media, it does make it seem like it's easier to get in. It's easier to go buy a camera. It's easy to go buy a video camera and just start shooting. But like you, like you mentioned, it takes time to learn and you also have to have some type of quality about your work. Right. And for me, the biggest part has always been customer service. You've been to our studio, you know how we treat you yeah, when you come wonderful. in. Uh, and, and for me, that's one way that I'm able to hopefully stand out among other people. There are guys that's been shooting for two years who can probably blow me under the water with their photography and their Photoshop. That's great. Right. But they don't have the business acumen. They're not responding to their emails on time. They're mm. not giving clients their pictures on time. They're not calling That's back so people cool. on time. That's the part that they don't quite understand. You got to run that business part. That business part isn't there. Regardless of how talented you are, it won't last long. Right, right. Absolutely not. And what would you say the secret is to what you've done? Because you've been doing this for uh, over 20 years now. It's consistency. Awesome. Okay. Just consistently do the best that that I can do. That's all I can do. Consistently give good um, customer service. Consistently show up on time. Yes. Uh, time respond. <laughs> respond to people. Communicate with people. Right. Let them know exactly. Hey, your images, your video is going to be ready in X amount of days. It's going to take me this long to get it to you. You know, that right. way no one's sitting around wondering, okay, it's three months later now and I haven't seen anything. Right, yeah. absolutely. Just communication, that's that's a big part of it. And, and having a business plan that's going to work not only for you, but also for, for your clients. Don't do a business plan that's just for your clients only, but you can't make it work right. because it's just it's, it's too unattainable. So you got to find that, that sweet spot that works for everybody. Altruist Home Healthcare is one of the top accredited home health care agencies servicing North and East Texas. With over 25 years of caring for Texas families, Altruist Network of staff has become the preferred provider of physical and occupational therapy, wound, post-surgery, and primary care within the comfort of your home. Altruist Home Healthcare works in conjunction with you, your loved ones, and your primary care physician to provide stellar care with honor and integrity. For more information on our services, visit our website, www.altruisthhc.com or call us at 214-328-8600. Now back to the show. I happen to be a business owner who happens to be black. I don't pitch my services only to black businesses, I don't pitch my services to only those that are non-black businesses. I mm -hmm. pitch my services to everybody. And so when, when a customer comes in, I want them to look at me as a business first and then say, hey, this is a great business that's run by this, this couple that is that's, that's doing everything right. Oh, you know what? Also, they're black. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I want people to look at it uh, when, when they come into our studio. Mm -hmm. Now, 90% of my clientele is African-American based. That's who I service. Okay. Go to my website, that's what you see. That's who supports me. So you come into my studio, on my studio walls, you will see 90% African-American pictures on my walls. Because okay. that's who service me, that's who takes care of me, that's who feeds my family. 
So I'm going to definitely showcase that work uh, with no shame at all. Right. But I think the fact that you have uh, international sponsors that uh, that you do work for, I think that speaks for itself and shows that you're not only, you know, you happen to be black, but you service everybody. Exactly. So that wasn't necessarily something I would have asked because the work speaks for itself on the platforms that you deal with. And mm -hmm. I think as black people, we have to be uh, cognitively aware of that and know that when we are working with people, uh, the color doesn't matter. We're here to do a business. So whether you're black, brown, purple, blue, green, white, pink, whatever you are, you know, it it doesn't have anything to do with the business right. or the or the delivery of the service. So and if you weren't able to do that, you wouldn't have those platforms to illustrate your work. Exactly. Exactly. That, yeah, it doesn't matter what the color my skin. If my if my work is bad, then I hire me. Right. <laughs> regardless. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> regardless. You might get trashed in the industry get, if exactly. your work is bad. Because yep. I've seen that happen to some good photographers who had, I'm gonna say bad days. You know. Yeah, yeah, we all have bad days, but you got to be able to bounce back from those days. And, and, right. and when you get the opportunity again, make sure you put your best foot forward. Exactly. Exactly. One thing that you keep mentioning that we don't get to talk a lot about on the show is the work life balance. And as a black man, how do you do a work life balance? Because you've expressed it several times. So I know it's important yeah. to you. But how do you maintain that? It took a long time to get a balance. Okay. Uh, when I first went into this full time, I called myself, I was a true, whether it's a good term or bad term, hustler. I mean, I would, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting everything under the sun, <laughs> no matter what time of day it was, because that was my source of income. Right. I'm trying to get established. So I'm shooting birthday parties, bridal showers, bachelor, bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, weddings, um, one year old birthday party. It didn't matter what it was. If it was a job and paid, I was there. Right. Uh, but it took me a while to, to realize, you know what? I don't enjoy shooting certain things. Okay. And I don't enjoy being gone from eight in the morning to midnight from, right. from my family or from my house. So let me find a way. And my, my, my biggest pet peeve, what I think I did a lot was I would try to uh, eat, 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 schedule around cowboy games. Oh. Big cowboy fan. <laughs> right. And so, and, and I'm like, wait a minute, what's my clients? Well, but Cowboy's not paying me no money, though, to go <laughs> sit there and watch that game. So trying to find that balance where, you know what, I'm going to enjoy the game on this Sunday, but next Sunday I'm working. Right. I'm going to take off this Sunday, but next Sunday I may put an extra, I may just cover one, one session. Okay. So just trying to find that balance. And it took a while to realize that this is my company. I can set my schedule. Right. It's okay if I set my schedule. If I don't want to answer the phone after 6 o'clock, I have to answer the phone after 6, 6 o'clock. And it's still tough from time to time, but I have been able to kind of put that more in into uh, focus. And, and it helps having a strong wife that also makes sure you put that in focus. Okay, good. So, so she keeps you grounded she keeps on me the grounded. schedule. It is, <laughs> yes. At a certain time, Excellent. you got to just say enough's enough. Okay. Good, good. And I think that's good information because a lot of times people get so caught up in I'm building this business, I'm doing this do. and, and you really forget. I know for me personally, you forget about the home life and you forget, oh, I need to schedule this or, oh, yeah. I do need to be at home for this or we've got this to do with the family. Exactly. You know, so it's important and it's important it to know how to get there. It is. And if you're not there, you know, it takes a minute to build that. Perfect. So I think that's awesome. So tell us what's in store. I heard that there was something else going on. What's all this <laughs> about? Uh, well, we just recently, or since I say recently, it's about a year now, moved into a new studio. Okay. Uh, we went from 4,000 square feet to 6,500 square feet now space. Wow. And it allows us to build sets. And that was a big part of it. Drive in okay. cars, drive in equipment, uh, build bigger sets to hopefully. Uh, accommodate larger clients and larger budget clients that need some custom stuff done. Okay. And so that's a big part of it. And then also we were able to open up three podcast studios with inside there as well. Oh, nice. We have one currently working and operating, and then we have plans to get the other two, at least one more done before the end of this year. Okay. And then the last one will be done next year. Okay, that's wonderful. And how would somebody go about trying to get podcast space at your studio? Sure, you just easily uh, go to our website, Send us an email. 
Uh, I think we even have, or, or you can just request the podcast packages. Okay. We email those to people, send them out to clients, uh, and they're simply as renting. And the best, best thing about the podcast room, we have all the equipment there. Really, you okay. just come in, sit down with your material, and start talking, and we hit record and go. Nice. Real simple. Yeah, that is real simple, so that's nice. Tell us what's on the horizon for Kawan Burton. Great question. Uh, trying to, once again, push more into that video okay. realm. Maybe work on a few uh, video projects. Uh, st- hopefully start a couple of reality type series and see how they go. At least be able to pitch them. Okay. Things like that. And then just continue to increase um, client awareness through our through commercials. Okay. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now, where are you from here? Come on. Well, I'm a... It's, it's kind of a around the world thing type of thing. I grew up some in Dallas. Moved to Wichita Falls at a very young age. Okay. Wichita Falls, Texas, about two hours north of Dallas. Right. But I came back around eighth grade. So I've okay. been in Dallas since eighth grade on. Where did besides you go to going high to college. School? High school skyline. Okay. Yep, skyline. So Raider. Pleasant Grove's fine. Pleasant Grove. as well. <laughs> but uh, but I was in uh Carter School District in Oak Cliff. Oh. I went to Skyline because back then Skyline had a commercial art cluster or program. They were considered, they, they weren't necessarily, I guess, we had a, what, magnet schools? I mean, right. they were called magnet and schools Skyline then. Was considered Skyline a magnet was considered a magnet school. For school. Right. So they had a commercial mm-hmm. art program, which is why I went to Skyline in order to, to do that. I did that all four years I was there. Well, the okay. first year you do an introductory to different clusters, they call them clusters then. And then you pick which one. And for me, they even had photography too. I didn't right. do that. One. I did Maybe. commercial art. Okay. So I would bus, catch the bus at Carter High School. To Skyline, oh, to Skyline, and then okay. do classes and come back and everything. Okay, nice, so, nice. So. And then from there, I went to Baylor and then back to Dallas. Okay, so you stayed in Texas stayed the whole in Texas. time. True to Texas. Yep, true That's Texas. why you're a Texas boss. Eh? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, <laughs> but the transition of that and working, because so many people have uh, transplanted to Dallas mm-hmm. and have come into the metropolitan area with whatever skill or asset they bring. But there's one thing, if you're from Dallas, there is a certain click mm-hmm. that you need to be in. And the click rolls a certain way. Right. So it's easier to get in if you're from Dallas versus outside of Dallas. What exactly. do you think about that? I think you're actually correct. Okay. Uh, and But I don't think I have any issues or had any hard times, uh, you know, adding or, or communicating and, and, and blending with other people outside of Dallas. Right. I, I don't think, I think Dallas put more of an emphasis on that than other people do. You think so? Because uh, you're here in Dallas, right? <laughs> the question is, is always, well, you got to leave Dallas to get popular and get famous and then come back to Dallas to, to do anything. <laughs> but I think Dallas is the only one who says that. Are people in Dallas? Right. No one from anybody, no one from anywhere else ever says I gotta leave my city, go somewhere else, and come back to my city. No, you have, what you have to understand is Dallas has a certain place, and and you have to know and be honest with yourself and understand that Dallas, like I mentioned earlier, is a commercial photography town. Well, what does that mean? It's commercial because the biggest source of, of photography out of Dallas for a long time was J.C. Penney. Well, yeah. JCP is a commercial. They they shoot commercial type images for their website and for their catalogs and magazines. So right. Dallas was considered a celebrity town. It's not considered right. a fashion hub. You still got New York, LA, maybe even Chicago or or Miami ahead of Dallas when it comes to that. So you have to understand where Dallas kind of sits in that photography and video realm and then go from there. But do you feel like, because I feel like Dallas is emerging fashion-wise, what do you feel like as a photographer? I still feel like it's, it's lacking. Okay, what is Dallas I lacking? I think it's just <laughs> lacking, it, it, you know what, for it to be a fashion town, and, and my, it's only my opinion, don't mean nothing, <laughs> uh, I think we're still lacking the celebrity part that pushes the fashion forward. You know what? And people always ask me about what celebrities are in Dallas, what celebrities. And if you're talking about an international celebrity, there aren't any. But when you're talking about the sports level, Mm -hmm. you know, we've got them. We've got a lot of country and western singers. I always tell people who are here. And we do have rappers that are in and Mm -hmm. out of Dallas. And we have national um, people who are here, but international 
No. No. And, but, and, but I think we can make the best of what we oh, have. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Without you know, doubt. to make it even better. We've got a lot of executives. So mm-hmm. it just depends on what type of celebrity, to me, that you're looking for. Because we've got the CEOs here right. from all over the world and uh, some of the top CEOs in the country. Mm-hmm. We've got the billionaires. Mm-hmm. So what is that? The, you well, know. My, my thing is, who? But, but who pushes the fashion forward, I guess, the fastest? Mm, well, that's always going to be New York and L.A. Right. But I mean, within those yeah. towns, it's going to be the celebrities within those towns. Yeah. You but see, a lot of the, them are coming in, you know. Well, they come to, to Dallas. Host. They come into Dallas. Yeah, yeah, they come in to host a party, host mm-hmm. an event. Mm-hmm. But another question is, and maybe Mario can answer this, why do most celebrities schedule their concerts on like a Tuesday or Wednesday night? I hate that when that happens. They do, here. They do that here. They don't do that in New York or L.A. Oh, they do no, that here. They couldn't. They come in on right. a Tuesday or Wednesday night because and I've, I've, I've always said, once again, being from Dallas, I've always said, I think it's just because they don't respect Dallas enough to schedule their event on a weekend. Right. It's not a major hub for them. It's a fly-by town. They come in, do their show, and they, and and they leave and go. Right. That's why I continue to say Dallas is not a celebrity town. If it's a celebrity town, you're going to schedule it on the weekend. You're yeah. going to hang out here a little bit when you're here in town. They come in, they do their show, they go into the next place. Right, headed to Houston, New mm-hmm. Orleans. Right. Somewhere so that's else. that's why I don't think Dallas has that fashion that people believe we have. And, 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 and from my viewpoint, it's, it's celebrity. That's why if you go to my website, you go to anything that I put up, I never put celebrity photographer. Okay. I'm not a celebrity photographer. I'm in Dallas. There are no <laughs> celebrities here. No, get me wrong. There, there are. We have our, we have our gospel celebrities. I, I right. was, I was fortunate do. enough to do an album cover for Kirk Franklin a few years ago, uh, and for um, uh, which was an, which was an amazing opportunity. Um, so we do have our our gospel celebrities here, and we do have, like you said, our athlete celebrities are here. Um, but remember, for many years, we couldn't get them on the Mavericks for nothing. Right. <laughs> they didn't right. want to come to Dallas. Right. When we had Derek. It was hard so. to get a, celeb- a, a big time basketball player in Dallas. Right. You know, football is different because, you know, we love our football here in Dallas. So we can get those guys here. Everybody loves Jerry Jones and been able to play for the Cowboys. Right. So and now the Rangers just won. Now the, the Rangers World just won. Series, so, so, you know, maybe start getting some baseball celebrities <laughs> coming in. And things like that. And we have our country and western stars, like you said. I'm not in that. And we've that. got our soccer team. And we got our soccer team. So we have a lot going on in Dallas that we do. people don't always see or uh, recognize. Right. But there is a lot going on here. But I'm not an event photographer. Okay. Or a conference photographer. So I'm not in those those areas circles. as much, or those circles. Anything you want the viewers to know? Uh, feel free to check out my work, my website. I will throw a pitch out there. Uh-huh. It's it's, um, it's a it's a word website. The story behind that too, why it has a name, but it's ksbfoto.com. That's ksb as a boy, fotocom Feel free to check out uh, the website, the work there, uh, and and I look forward to continuing to doing what I do here in Dallas. Absolutely, thank you. I'll be in studio soon. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Big Texas Boston Podcast. If you like these conversations, be sure to subscribe on YouTube and follow us on all social media platforms at Big Texas Boston. Tag us on social at hashtag BTB.